Hey, what's up everybody? My name's Dave R. And today I'm going to show you guys uh, kind of a detailed overview of my widget list gem. It is a pagination gem um, that I think everybody should um, take a look at. It's, it's uh, quite unique compared to other pagination gems in the Ruby on Rails world. And uh, without further ado, let's, let's take a look at my GitHub um, repository. Um, so I have <clears throat> two, two different repositories here, um, the widget list, which is basically the gem, and the widget list example, which uh, we'll take a look at um, in a minute here. And um, when you're getting started, uh, either implementing this in an existing application or just taking a look at this example, um, let's just take a look at um, the widget list uh, YAML file. And uh, let's take a look at um, what we have set up in this example. Um, so right here under um, the widget list supports two primary database connections right now and you can either implement a SQLite uh, I'm sorry a uh, SQL gem if you go back to my dependencies <clears throat> I depend on uh, SQL so um, you know if you, you you can either implement the widget list in uh, active model records or the SQL gem and if you're implementing your active model records I also um, integrate with RANSAC which if you're not familiar with RANSAC it is an advanced um, let's call it a filter builder um, so we'll show you that in a little later but um, if you look at your connections uh, right now my primary connection in the example is a SQLite database pointing to uh, Let's see here. Pointing to our um, our SQLite database, and uh, <clears throat> the secondary connection is pointing to our development, which is basically the same develop uh, database. If you look at database YAML, they're all pointing to the same SQLite database in this example. Um, I've tested a lot of uh, Postgres, MySQL, Oracle, and SQLite, um, but this thing could could in theory be used on SQL Server. Uh, and um, anything else that Active Model uh, supports or the SQL Gem supports. So um, I think that's about it with the widget list example. Um, and let's let's um, let's kind of look at the README here. Um, you guys can can take a look at it. Um, you know, in, instead of kind of looking at everything here, why don't we just get right into the examples? Um, so this is the widget list example uh, repository, and um, let's take a look at our active record example here, and show off some of the features. So the widget list um, supports all sorts of themes uh, as to how you want your list to look. Um, if you go back to my repositories. I have a few um, separate gems that I've published, um, one called Blue Sky Basin. And the themes are very, very simple to generate. Uh, you can see I just set up a, a hash uh, with, with the desired uh, styling. And in fact, I even have a shell script that will just generate a new gem based on whatever theme uh, you build. So um, when you're first looking at this thing, let's just kind of play with play with the list right now. Um, everything is templated out into sections, and um, we'll get into more details about how these are implemented. But let's just kind of play around with this. This is a group by area, so um, you, you could use it for all sorts of different uh, ways to interact with your list, such as grouping, or it could be like a predefined uh, some sort of predefined report filtering the data of some sort so the user can just you know uh, click on a select box and and jump to something so right here you know I'm grouping by name and uh, so I got all these items and uh, you know when I group by name I have uh, let's see the most eight eight um, records for this particular name uh, and uh, oh, let's let's go back to this. Um, I should have this should have pulled some data here, but um, 
for development, it shows you the query being rendered. And it looks like with SQLite, um, there's an issue where it's not finding a record here where a name is whatever this is with the double quotes, but I'm sure something without a double quote might work. Oh, maybe not. Maybe when we're grouping by, uh, let me see, that, that should work. Let's, let's try meow8. Okay, so that worked there, but there might be a problem with uh, when it's grouping by name uh, where the where these what I call drill downs uh, are failing when it's grouping by name in SQLite but when you're looking at a non-grouped um, uh, view you can see it's filtering by the name and these red ones I color them red just to differentiate them but I could kind of drill down by SKU number um, and then you can click this back button here um, all of these are mostly implemented with common functions. Um, we'll, we'll look at the code a little later, but let's keep playing around with this. So I set up, you know, as you can see here, um, in this example, you can sort uh, sort any column. By default, the widget list will uh, sort all the columns that are visible, but um, we'll see a little later that uh, you can just turn those off. And um, so, so you know, you can see I can sort. Um, we got different titles here that um, that you can configure based on the grouping. And um, this final grouping here, um, these other two groupings are just a count, but this one here, the averages and sums, I'm not really grouping by here, but I'm using another feature of the widget list uh, where you can total uh, numeric columns and get averages or just add up all the records shown. So let's say you had, you know, all five, I only have 500 items in my database. Um, if I go down here to um, paginate and uh, select that I want 500 per page, let's go down here and check out our, um, our averages, averages, average price for all 500 SKUs, or I mean products. And this is just, you know, nobody really should be adding up SKUs that doesn't really make sense but if you have a, a data data element that is a, is a good um, field to, to average or, or sum um, you can do this extremely easily um, so let's go back down to 10 per record per, per page and let's go back to all items and so these links here I set up you know these drill down links are a separate component to implement and these here are um, basically custom on clicks for uh, these events. Now, this isn't really an error. I just didn't set up a page. But what you can see here is, um, you know, the URL that's built is passing the ID and the date uh, for each one of these uh, records. So, and then this one here, this just pops up an alert of the value of the price. And then this one just calls a function with... Um, two parameters. It's just a custom alert function that's showing you that's passing both values. Um, you, we can we can inspect the elements and uh, just see what it's doing. It's calling alert to and passing these two values here. And uh, I mean I guess I could jump into the code real quick uh, looking at how some of those links are are implemented. Um, you basically point to the you 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 give it a, a link configuration. You give it a column, and right here I'm giving it an on click function, and then I'm passing uh, um, a single column the price to that alert, um, and it will build just uh, so that's that first alert. It would only just pass one one value to that one function, um, and then this one here, you give it a page, and I went to my page, and then ID, and then date added. And that's how that built built out um, this broken link here. Um, and then finally, um, the alert two. If you pass these tags separate, um, pointing to those columns, it would uh, call that function and pass each each value as a separate parameter. And then I just styled that column. Um, okay, so. Um, we also have some actions. So this is the widget list. Um, we have widget buttons, 
We have widget selects. All those kinds of uh, inputs are kind of separate modules that um, get used uh, and that you could use uh, to, to draw your inputs and whatnot. The inputs that the widget list draws are kind of um, are kind of uh, curved images for the the input boxes. And uh, let's let's take a look here at um, some of the support for this wildcard search. So everything here is configurable in terms of the display here. This is configurable. Um, whether you show the pagination is configurable. This bottom footer is configurable for like an, an ad or some major action. Um, in this example here, I don't have checkboxes. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, that's easily implementable. Let's take a look at uh, the search. So uh, if you have a numeric column, usually ID is defaulted. Um, but if you have a numeric, any numeric column, you could essentially, um, you know, build a CSV, and uh, you can search and, and find all those records. Or you could do like a wildcard search, you know, ABC. Oops. ABC. Let me see what uh, what kind of values I have. How about ASDF? Okay, so we got some matches. 100 matches on ASDF. Um, let's test this out. Let's see what happens when we drill into here. So it clears your search um, when you when you drill in. Let's drill out and um, let's take a look at this advanced form here. So this is Ransack, and uh, you know I'll show you how how it's implemented when when you pass when when you configure Ransack. A little later, but let's just play with it right now, and uh, let's uh, let's try to find um, uh, all the records with the price greater than 50 bucks. And uh, let's just uh, let's just run that. So we got 261 records, and let's make sure it filtered right. Yeah, we got about you know our lowest min value is 51. And let's say, um, let's go with the date added of equaling, let's go 2008, uh, 0205. Okay, so we got 48 records. So you get the idea with Ransack, you can add multiple conditions uh, and you can remove them, customize them, and search. But at the same time, uh, when you enable Ransack, you just get this, but you also have the ability to merge in your own custom uh, HTML and apply your own filters. If there's some sort of select box you want to build with certain distinct values, you could do so. But you just have to handle it on your own. Once that search comes in, um, you recognize the request. And uh, so that's about it with uh, this example. Um, can't think of much else. Oh, I missed export, so. Every single view you have, um, you can export it. Um, you know, there's your data. And, uh, you know, if, if you wanted, if you had business requirements to, um, you know, let's say, uh, export all records, you know, with instead of just the, the, the 10 that are visible or whatever's within this limit, um, you could export all 48 pretty easily you just um, during during that request um, just apply uh, like no limit on your on your query and it will just fetch everything for you and return it all let's take a look at this one here I think this one has a checkbox so this one <coughs> this one is implemented um, it doesn't use ransack because um, we can take a look at how it's implemented really implemented with just raw SQL uh, where you pass um, inside of your view you pass the raw SQL and it's it's writing on the uh, if you remember from the beginning the primary connection so um, you know take a look at some of the the examples and look at how everything's passed make sure you understand you know a little bit about what's going on in terms of which connection it's using uh, and how everything's defaulted in, in the gem. Um, but as you can see here, 
<clears throat> I have a checkbox set up and um, you know uh, you can also see that um, some of these are disabled so there's um, there's certain uh, cool little um, let me see here. There's certain cool little um, things you can do with with different widgets like checkboxes and whatnot. And let me try to find. Okay, so here's where I am merging in a a um, anonymous proc, and um, you know if active if the rows active equals to no, then I'm uh, I'm disabling this this thing from being clicked. So um, so you could essentially you know check all these things off, click this action, and, and uh, maybe not have to do as much, you know, validation, um, you know, unless your users are going into Firebug and, and uh, manipulating the disabled attribute. Um, so, um, let's see, so those checkboxes um, usually point to a, a field so that it sets a value of 18 for the primary key so that you can differentiate these checks. And this one um, doesn't have all the links set up that it did with the other list. This theme here is the default theme. It's got a little bit of curve, a little bit of shadow. Um, and uh, let me see what else with this. That's about it with this. So the coolest thing with the uh, 1.34 gem that I just completed is the administration console and uh, without getting into all sorts of the details of some of the code let's just take a look at the administration console and how that works um, so when you land at the administration console let's take a look at everything here um, with all these these areas and um, so when you land here, um, you got all sorts of help that you can you can look at each one of these um, configurations, and uh, but when you first land, um, you know you select a model to kind of drive everything to pull all the uh, the fields and whatnot. And the first thing we're going to see here is that uh, we kind of have an error of some sort. You know, nothing really rendered in this. It said unrecognized token. Um, and these again are just shown in development. In production, um, any list that gets rendered with um, some sort of a SQL error or um, an exception uh, would just say an error occurred and it would say it would show your no data found. Um, but the reason we're getting this is because right now I showed you that my active model uh, pointer in the config is pointing to the secondary connection so all we got to do is uncheck that and um, you know kind of proceed ahead and let's do that here and so um, so now we see we have some 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 data rendering in the list with all the default uh, default parameters now let's take a look here okay so that's the item we have a category column I forgot I added that recently um, but it's definitely recommended um, you know, I added this category ID here, um, but that's not very user friendly. Obviously, you'd want to show the user like, and um, so you obviously want to show the user whatever the category name is. Um, so I would recommend you could, in theory, join your models using Arrow and uh, add joins to other tables, but it's probably best to, you know, add a view. And let's take a look at this view, see if this works. Okay, so where we have the view uh, already has the column in there, um, and I, I show category ID here. We'll, uh, but let's let's just go back to items. But you know, once you get into joins, you get into table aliases, which you have to you know, if you have two columns with the same name, you have to specify which column you're dealing with. So it's easier to work with views if you can, um, but you could. In theory, uh, I've implemented um, some Oracle lists that I, I had to do that where I didn't create a new view and uh, you would just, you know, um, let me switch to items and I'll, I'll type some stuff out. If, if you were to join two models together in, in, an, in an arrow, 
view, uh, you would just say, you know, let's say you had two IDs, you would say, you know, items dot, you know, ID for one as the field name and, uh, you know, whatever your second table is. So hopefully this thing is still recording here. It popped up something, but so let's let's move, let's talk about each one of these things here. Um, you know the controller location and, and action. This is mostly just used for internal purposes. Um, uh, it it kind of predefines your current controller um, because there's different ways that you could go about implementing this administration console. You could, in theory, start a new controller and paste this code in every controller 